And so this panel is designed with a wide variety of approaches of people who have uh, developed uh, alternative methods of financing, either in other uh, uh, therapeutic areas uh, or in Alzheimer's. In Alzheimer's, there is so much investment spread so widely and the market returns are so enormous, there will not be a justification for an exorbitant price for the, for the cure or the treatment because everybody is going to be interested in it, especially preventive vaccines and that sort of thing. I think the more novel an idea, the more likely you are to be able to build support in a Alzheimer's market that has been terribly uh, disastrous as far as getting drugs across the finish line. You've heard multiple times, investors need a return. Uh, we're fortunate inside of healthcare that the investors that choose to be in healthcare often also have a social purpose for why they have chosen that. So we did a survey with our clients in a focus group saying, how many of these folks would be interested in a values-oriented direct social impact investing? And I would have been happy as a program manager to get one in 10 uh, or two in 10, but 45% of our clients said that they would like to have a conversation with our clients around a value-oriented investment, not in philanthropy, but in their portfolio. We raised a billion six for a new research building right up here on 69th Street between York and First Avenue, and we used a completely different approach. Not that we did not raise money for cardiology and um, oncology, but we centered on unmet medical needs. Specifically, we started by gearing in three, a melanoma, diabetes, and by far the most important, neurodegenerative diseases. And we used a little different tactics. We knew we didn't have positive outcomes, so we scared people. Uh, <laughs> you had to do something. We became arm twisters. And uh, we literally said to these people, this is something you should be scared of at least two levels. One yourself, and we're not talking genetics, just the fact that the numbers suggest that as you approach your 80s and later, you have a very high chance of these diseases in which there are no current cures. And that was one. And number two uh, was the whole question of the economic environment, the fact that if we don't control this disease, with the numbers and the amount of care, uh, the whole society is in big trouble. Down the road, 10, 15, 20 years, we're all going to collapse. You must do something. Imagine a government-guaranteed Alzheimer's bonds in which we get a million people to invest $1,000 each, uh, and the government guarantees repayment of principal, so that's a billion dollars. Uh, that investment goes into your research enterprise, and over a course of X numbers of years, and we'll do this every year, uh, we actually get a cost reduction to Medicare. And so the government guarantees repayment of your bond based upon the savings that they achieve because you've been able to reduce the number of dementia years and the costs to the public health system of your work. In addition to my work at IAVI, I'm involved with a new uh, social impact fund that was recently launched, sponsored and launched by the Gates Foundation. It's called the Global Health Investment Fund. And it's really a pilot fund to try to bring private sector capital into late stage product development with a focus on the diseases impacting the developing world. Um, the partners who came together to create and fund this pilot fund, $100 million fund, uh, again range from the public sector to the private sector. We have uh, the governments of uh, Germany, Canada, and Sweden, the IFC, a multilateral, GSK, Merck, and Pfizer, um, as well as J.P. Morgan, and a host of uh, philanthropic uh, individual donors. It does seem to me that the capital is available. Capital is available from sovereign funds. Capital is available from high net worth investors, as Bob Appel has uh, proven, and as, uh, as Merrill Lynch and Bank of America have reported out, the capital is available, I think, from the American people in a variety of ways. And the question is how it is that we begin to connect the opportunities for those who need uh, financial returns uh, with the capital uh, that is either seeking it or the capital that is philanthropic in character.